Deep within a forest, a meadow sits at the foot of a gentle hill where deer often come to graze in the early morning haze. It was the hour before sunrise, as moonlight shone through the mist of the forest. Ghostly currents swirled out from the trees and drifted over the open meadow with a pale, silvery glow. Two deer emerged from the fog. A doe and her fawn had come to feed on the meadow's dew-covered grass. Anxious to play, the fawn ignored the sweet grass quivering in the breeze to chase through a swarm of glowing fireflies. His mother lowered her head to eat while the little fawn happily pranced about. But then, he suddenly stopped. Something was in the air. A wonderful scent drifted in the mist. Strawberries, he thought, and quickly set off following the smell that led him to the edge of the meadow at the bottom of the hill. A stream flowed here, and beyond it stood the towering trees of the forest. On the bank, he found a strawberry plant with a single strawberry. Large, bright, and red, it stood out in the haze. Quickly, he ate it with delight, and then began looking around, hoping to find another. But in the forest across the stream, someone waited. Hidden in the underbrush, a stranger watched the young deer. The animal followed the fawn's every move with widened eyes and salivated as he came closer to the stream. Just when the time was right, the stranger made his move. Are you looking for something? asked the stranger as he popped his furry head out from behind a bush. It was a little gray fox. Yes, the fawn gasped with a quick step back. I found a strawberry in one another, but I don't see any more. There are no more. In fact, I was about to eat the one you just ate, the fox replied. I I'm sorry, I, I didn't know, the fawn stammered. Oh no, the fox interrupted. Don't be sorry, I just won't have it. It was my mistake to wait. Now, listen, because I have great news for both of us. Stepping into the stream, the fox began to speak with growing excitement. I know a special place where we can find the largest, reddest, and juiciest strawberries in the whole forest. Really? The fawn asked eagerly. Where is it? Is it close? Oh, it's close enough, the fox replied with a delighted smile. I could show you, if you like. But you're a stranger, the fawn said while turning back to the meadow. I'm not going anywhere with you. Ah, said the fox as he slipped in front of him. What harm could a little fox do? Come now, we should hurry. Many animals love strawberries. Remember what happened because I waited? For a moment, the fawn wondered how dangerous such a little animal could be. He did seem nice and harmless enough. Well, okay, the fawn said. I sure don't want to miss those strawberries. So the fawn crossed over the stream with the fox and disappeared into the shadows of the forest. They soon came upon a gully, where twisted trees grew. Roots spiraled in and out of the ground, creating many shadowy places for terrible things to hide. Without delay, the fox led the fawn down the steep slope into the deep basin below. It was spooky here. Long strands of moss hung from the branches like tattered curtains, blocking out most of the faint moonlight shining from above. The fawn soon began to fear being in such a dark and lonely place. When they came upon the remains of a large trunk, the fox turned to the fawn and said, The strawberries are just behind this fallen tree. Hurry! Come and see! Suddenly, 
A huge wolf leapt out from behind the shattered trunk. The fawn jumped back with fright, grinning wickedly. The fox climbed upon the stricken tree. It had been a trap, and the fox was waiting for his share of the meat. With a deep, guttural growl, the wolf crept toward the little fawn, showing cruel, sharp teeth that gleamed like spears in the darkness. The little deer's legs shook, and his eyes widened with fear. Help! shouted the fawn as he dashed for the slope of the gully. But the wolf was right behind him, snapping at his legs. Desperate to escape, the fawn kicked the predator, sending him sliding down the slope to land where the fox waited. With a frightful squeal, that trickster scampered off into the depths of the gully in fear that the hungry wolf would settle for fox meat rather than chase after the little deer. The fawn scrambled out of the gully, Darting around trees and leaping over underbrush, the little deer ran. Help! he continued to shout, his cries echoing through the forest. A dreadful howl spilled up from the gully. The wolf was coming. Snarling came from behind as the wolf lunged at the fawn's hind legs, but missed. In terror, the fawn cried out again, Help! Help! The wolf would not miss again. Suddenly, the wolf cried out with a painful yelp. Spinning around, the fawn found the wolf thrashing about on the ground, and his mother standing over the beast. She had thrown the predator down with a powerful kick. The wolf flailed about until he regained his footing with a hissing growl. The beast's eyes flared at the doe, and he prepared to charge. But a pain throbbed in his side, and he staggered. The wolf was badly injured. With a snarl at the doe, the wolf spat before fleeing into the darkness. Now that the wolf was gone, the doe quickly turned to her fawn. Explain yourself, she demanded sternly. With a lowered head, the fawn walked over to her and told her everything. I have always told you never to go with strangers, and to run to me if one approaches you. Think about what almost happened. The fawn did not have to think long. He had seen the wolf's teeth. She sighed deeply, and the anger faded from her voice. When I couldn't find you, I was scared. I thought I had lost you. I almost did. I love you, and I don't want anything bad to ever happen to you. The doe leaned down to gently nuzzle her fawn. Not all strangers are bad, she said gently. Most are very nice and friendly. But it can be hard to know. Some will hurt you if they can. It's up to you and me to make sure that they can't.